Hey everyone, glad you could join me today. UT Martin is currently on pace for their best season ever in Coach Carter's five-year tenure at the school. Welcome back to the Coach Carter College Ships 2K Legacy Mode Series, episode 37 today. And this has been by far Coach Carter's most impressive team that he's coached here at UT Martin. It really has everything. It has leadership, defense, shooting, and teamwork. And it's clear to see that UT Martin is becoming the clear favorites in the conference. We're going to begin this installment with a quick simulation against Tennessee State who is currently a fringe playoff team in the Ohio Valley here in Season 5. And with this 4 point victory, the Skyhawks are now victorious in 9 out of 10 to begin conference play, 9-1 overall. No one shot particularly well for the Skyhawks, however at this point in the season it's just about finding ways to win, simple as that. Chris Fay led all scores with 14. As the Skyhawks become really the team to beat in the Ohio Valley, you see 9-1 in the conference, 14-4 overall, the only team above 500 overall as we continue on and face the weakest team in the conference to begin this episode. Eastern Illinois has never really been all that competitive ever since Coach Carter stepped in and became a piece of the Ohio Valley Conference. But they do have some really good individual players, it's pretty surprising that they aren't more competitive this season, however they are missing their biggest transfer acquisition, Oliver Simons who came over from Miami of Ohio. He averages 10 and leads the conference with 12.5 rebounds game, however he's missing a lot of time with a broken foot. So Eastern Illinois, the weakest team in the conference, 2-9 overall along with missing their top scorer and rebounder, how will they keep pace with UC Martin? Well, let's hop in as hopefully this is a softball for our Skyhawks moving forward as they continue to try to become the team to beat here in the Ohio Valley as we make more progress here in Season 5. Nice job there by Pierre Hamilton finally getting us on the board as he hooks up there with Blaine Fry to mark in the stat sheet for the first time today as a team. Now tied up 6-6, six to six, Ian Huffleberry will try to pull a 3 and he will knock it down. Eastern Illinois not one of the better offensive teams not by any means they're actually last in the conference in points per game however second best defense in points per game allowed but they're not showing that they're showing their incredible shooting so far already two made threes and Roderick and Abongnu they're starting power forward made a jump shot earlier so right now UT Martin getting torched by one of the weaker teams shooting wise however I like this play right here a little screen for the screen reaction Chris Fay he set one for Blaine Fry and then rolled off of one from Luke Lawton and then staying after it on the press is Blaine Fry as he hooks up with Lawton who will knock down two free throws off of the steal off the press break gotta love that aggressiveness right there there's your two top steals leaders on the team Luke Lawton averages one and a half per game Game. As you see here, he's muscling his way through on another possession. 16 to 13. UT Martin slowly at Shirley making some progress as Lawton tips away another one. Blaine Fry wants to return the favor. He fakes the pass to Lawton and gives it off to Pierre Hamilton for the three point opportunity. Aiden Beamish, the two guard for Eastern Illinois, tacked for his second foul as UT Martin is back within one basket as the bench checks in. And leading the bench unit down the floor this time on this trip is Rashawn Martin who delivers a nice bounce pass to Teron Gardner as Gardner the sophomore leads the bench in points per game with 7 along with 5 rebounds a sky high shooting percentage and Rashawn Martin actually had his first collegiate star last episode we'll hold on to that thought for a second as Jameel Cannon comes off the bench to knock down a 3 pointer. Right now, Eastern Illinois, they are torching UT Martin from beyond the arc. They went into halftime with four made threes as a team. 22 to 19 as UT Martin is still trying to find their first three-pointer made and Jock Diggs was still in search for his first field goal made up until that gutsy take to the basket. A little weird to see Jock Diggs not up there flirting with one of the best scores in the entire ball game for either side as we go cut back to Rashawn Martin who puts the moves on his defender. Wow, that was a confident take there by the freshman. He had his first collegiate start last episode against Samford where he had 11 points, three rebounds, three assists without missing a field goal very impressive but Pierre Hamilton is back and healthy this episode 28 25 Riddick is met with a trap as he dishes to Will Vaughn the backup small forward who is not much of a three-point specialist but there's the fourth May three ball for the Panthers 
The three win, 15 loss Eastern Illinois Panthers are hanging with UT Martin and sport a six point lead heading into the break as Ian Huffleberry tries to make it nine. Luckily, there's a miss as Lawton, he's leaking out. Beautiful outlet pass by Blaine Fry, who puts it through. Knocks over Huffleberry and Luke Lawton, who always seems to provide a spark when you need it. He's become very sneaky. Um, good score is he's actually third on the team with eight and a half points per game, three rebounds, and a modest 36% from beyond the arc. I love his development becoming a top three scorer on this team. UT Martin pieced together a decent little run there at the end of the half, but Coach Carter is still far from pleased, and rightfully so. We have three more turnovers, one less rebound, and four less threes than EIU. In fact, we're still without a three-pointer in the outing, 0-4 for 4 as a team to this point. The only two guys that are finding success are the first two guys that Coach Carter ever recruited. With that and one, Luke Lawton became the top scorer with eight points, and Chris Fay has six and four with two blocks in the ballgame. EIU is spreading out the attack nicely. They've got five players who tallied at least four points, and one of them was that man right there, Aiden Beamish, who now gets up to five points. UT Martin coming out maybe a little bit complacent. I don't think they thought that <laughs> Eastern Illinois had this much swagger as a 3-15 and team. They're really playing up with the Skyhawks today. But there's a nice take by Pierre Hamilton as we cut the lead down in 4. 10-10 left to go. As checking back in for the Panthers is starting point guard Dexter Vassallo who only had 5 points in the first half. But through the 5... First five minutes of the second half, he already has six points, doubling his output and then some as he comes off a screen here against Pierre Hamilton. And with a little give and go here, he'll knock down another one. 14 for Dexter Vassallo as his explosions come out of nowhere to help the Panthers keep pace with UT Martin. 48-42 as we see Hamilton assisting to Blaine Fry. And that one's sent back by Evan Schneiderman. He really soared up there to send back the layup by Ian Huffleberry. And Blaine Fry on the other end will collect and finish. Nice pass by Hamilton as Blaine Fry is up to 12 points. And as you can see here, if you look closely in the short corner of the left side, it looks like Evan Schneiderman is hobbling a little bit. We'll come back to that later as Teron Gardner will feed this one outside. Nice shot by Jacques Diggs. He finally gives us boys in orange the first May three-pointer on the night for the squad, cutting lead down to five. But some sour news here. Evan Schneiderman made that great block, and you guys saw he was a little... Uh, gingerly hopping around there on the last possession. He's got an injury status next to his name. It looks like whenever he sort up and sent back that shot by Huffleberry, he sustained a foot injury when he came down a Bruce Teal. We won't be seeing any more of Schneiderman here in the rest of the ball game, which is kind of a sour situation because it's already enough that we're dealing with this much adversity, trying to hold off this 3-15 and team, actually come back on them, and now we have to deal with an injury as well. No matter who it happens to, it's just a tough hand to deal with, but there we go with Dusty Harrison knocking down a 3. UT Martin's still in the game, but they have to work a little bit quicker now. Time becoming a factor as nobody's in there to box out Alex Schiavone who once again adds to the rebound lead for the Panthers one of the more embarrassing rebound differentials you'll ever see but look at this pass wow what a dish by Pierre Hamilton he drew the entire defense with that crossover and let that ball kick out to the perimeter Diggs makes it three made three pointers as a team on the ball game all three of course have come in the second half Three minutes left to go, 59-55 as Chris Fay checks back in. He was dealing with a little bit of foul trouble there for a little while. Three to his name, but he comes back in and delivers a beautiful post hook over Schiavone to give him his first field goal of the second half of action. He actually had a solid first half with six. It took him a little while, but he's on the board here in the second half as well. 62-57 to as we're under three to play now. Diggs is receiving a screen from Blaine Fry. Nothing doing there. Bounce pass to Fry, inside to Faye, cross court, Lawton and Faye will hook up there. What a shot from the corner by Luke Lawton. A very tough shot. He had to get that over the 6'10", Alex Schiavone, who was closing out on him. 66-65. to 65. 
digs to Faye at the high post. He'll whip that pass in there to Blaine Fry, who is cutting in front of the bottom two men in that 2-3 zone. And as the clock turns from minutes to seconds, UT Martin has their first lead of the second half. 67-66, trying to hold off the upset bid. Dexter Vassallo has made three three-pointers here in the second half. He almost made it four there. A good-looking shot, but it was just off the mark. Blaine Fry collects rebound number seven, a huge one. We finally secure a rebound, setting Jacques Diggs to the line. He's normally so consistent, but this one's off the front iron. The door's still wide open for Eastern Illinois as Dexter Vassallo will set things up for the Panthers. No shot clock to worry about. 20 seconds left. They can take this one down as long as they'd like. 67 to 66. Vassallo, he scans the floor. 13 seconds left. 10. Let's go. What is Vassallo going to do? He goes back door to Roderick and a ball new for an and one. Wow. Caught UT Martin sleeping there. And Vassalo with assist number three, and Abognu has made four jump shots on the game, but now he converts an and one to add to his totals. What a night for both of those players right there. Seven seconds left, down by two. Two timeouts left for UT Martin, but Coach Carter doesn't want to take it. This ball's reversed around to Chris Fay for the tie, and a foul is called. Alex Schiavone is whistled for a foul, and that will keep the game alive, but... Christopher Fay, he needs both to tie it and send this into overtime. But Fay, we all know, has a, a very checkered pass at the charity stripe. Always an adventure when he steps up to the line. 67% for his career. The first one, though, looked good right out of his hand. It's all about confidence in these types of situations, whether you shoot 90% or 9%. It doesn't matter. you got to step up and act like you've been here before. Chris Fay, two spins of the ball and three dribbles. As he collects his thoughts, puts it up for the tie, and knocks it through. UT Martin, barring anything insane here, will force overtime as the last second attempt by Vassalo is off by about three feet. Christopher Fay, he will give us new life as we're going to put another five minutes on the overtime clock and get things started. 69 apiece as UT Martin still running with the same five players. Chris Fay met with a trap. He was the hero in regulation, and he makes an even better decision here, finding Jacques Diggs out on the perimeter to reach 16 points for the junior. Now EIU tries to dump it down for the tie. Nothing doing there as Blaine Fry continues his monster second half into the extra period of play. There's rebound number 10 for a double-double as Chris Fay almost has it stolen from him. But guess who's there to clean up the mess? Of course, it's Blaine Fry. 16 and 10 along with two rejections for him on this career night for Blaine Fry. Now Jacques Diggs will try to reverse this one around. This might be the best possession we saw in the entire overtime period. What movement? As they go left to right there, Jacques Diggs knocks down yet another three-pointer, giving him 20 on the night. Maybe one more stop, and UT Martin can finally put this stamp of approval on this ball game. Roger and Abognu has made four jump shots, but he comes up short there. And UT Martin, they will hold on, narrowly escaping the clutches of Eastern Illinois, 90 to 80. It was just amazing to see UT Martin really come together as a team. Blaine Fry, I think, deserves the game ball on this one. Four steals, a block, 20 and 12 for the game. As he actually entered the second half with only six and four. So you do the math on how good of a second half he had. And everybody stepped up at the free throw line. You see there on the right. The free throw percentage was sky high, a big reason why we held on to this game. Diggs, I was very surprised he got up to 20 points with the way he started this game, only entering the half with four. All in all, just hats off to EIU, a very impressive performance by the Panthers. As we move along, we're going to be facing a much more deserving adversary as we have a rematch against Eastern Kentucky. This is a box score from a couple weeks back whenever we didn't have Pierre Hamilton and Rashawn Martin was still starting a couple games. EKU has been our only loss in the entire year. They dealt us an 11 point loss when we were missing Pierre Hamilton and now we have to rematch the Colonels on our home floor as they have Aaron Dooley, a seven footer who always seems to give Chris Fay a hard time when they match up, and the conference's leading rebounder at 8.4 night for the junior Josh Marshall. 
Eastern Illinois had a guy who averaged 12 and a half, but he only played a couple games this episode due to his broken foot, so he's not eligible. So yes, Josh Marshall is the conference's leading rebounder, but starting off the Colonels today will not be any rebounding. It will be a three-point shot by Sam Rigel, who is one of the better marksmen across the entire conference. And just like last episode, UTM off to another slow start. Seven unanswered points for the Colonels as we're almost three minutes into the game without a field goal made. Blaine Fry trying to change our fortune. A nice double clutch move there by Fry coming off his career night against the Panthers. 11-6 game now. As Josh Marshall, he's met with a mismatch as he goes with the drop step move. He draws multiple Skyhawk defenders and still gets it done. Six points. As Marshall, he matches us as an entire team as we only have six. Check that. Now we have eight as some bench players check in, including Rashawn Martin, who sets up Jock Diggs nicely there. As Diggs, once again, it took him a while to get on the score sheet. He finds a jumper there from the elbow to get on the box score. 17 to 10 game now. Dominique Cleveland and Teron Garner join the five out on the floor and again Jock Diggs operates from the elbow. He flashed, threw up a pump. Doesn't get much easier than that for an all-conference level player. 19 to 12 as Lawton will try to fire here. No good. Garner on the glass. Lawton will fire again. This one's off once again and Blaine Fry is on the glass now but he's absolutely embarrassed by Liam Stevenson as the backup power forward sends his shot into the second row and the Colonels are actually a top three team and least points per game allowed and their defense is acting very stingy here in this matchup as Diggs comes off a screen for his third field goal and his third field goal from the elbow I think he found his magic touch from that spot on the floor tonight 19 to 16 not out of it just yet UT Martin looking for the tie here with perhaps a three-pointer as this one has worked around love the momentum here shifting into the favor of UT Martin it's capped off with a beautiful possession everybody touched the ball as Luke Lawton ties it up with a three-pointer there but backup point guard this is Arturo Conklin he'll throw this one away Peter Hamilton he will lead the break and how else would we tie up the game other than a lob pass from Pierre Hamilton's to Jacques Diggs. And that's just another example of those two best friends hooking up there on the floor. 23-21 giving UT Martin our first lead of the ball game. But Arturo Conklin, he's trying to make up for that turnover. And as he makes that three-pointer, nothing but net there by the freshman. EKU immediately back in the driver's seat as Conklin now takes away a steal on the press and then sets up Josh Marshall for a three-point play. So that is six unanswered points for EKU, and it will continue. Make that nine as now Sam Rigel will knock down three-pointer number three for the Colonels on the ball game. I like the little run UT Martin posted there near the end of the half, but... They're still down by seven, and they haven't improved on much of their issues from the Eastern Illinois game. They still turn the ball over more. They couldn't hit anything from downtown. Diggs started one for four, but did finish by hitting three for his next five. His struggles have been a little bit concerning recently. And the Bigs have had a good day on the glass. Blaine Fry, Chris Fay, and Teron Garner posted 12 rebounds combined. Some defense would be nice from that trio, though, as Sam Rigel and Josh Marshall, two forwards, combined for 23 points out of the Colonel's 36. A nice way to get things underway here in the second half, a little pick and roll between Peter Hamilton and Christopher Fay, as Fay's now up to nine points. He's someone who actually had a very impressive episode. He came in only averaging 12 and a half points. He rose that up to nearly 14 by the episode's end. Chris Fay was very impressive, but subbing in for him was Dominique Cleveland, who's been very solid in these recent weeks. I haven't shown him a lot, but there's a nice layup there. Great assist from Teron Garner. Only down by six. It's been a while since the lead has been this small, but Jay Jennings off the screen. Man, did that jump shot look confident or what? What a shot there by the starting sophomore point guard, Jay Jennings. 49 to 40, as we see here, Matthew Guyton, who has the mismatch. Not much that the 5 foot 8, 155 pound Jacques Diggs can do there when you got a 6 foot 7 player barging at you right there. 51 to 40, right now it's looking pretty bleak for UT Martin. And this would be pretty embarrassing if they drop their second game on the season. 
in conference play to Eastern Kentucky once again as here comes Darren Jones who tries the three luckily off of the missed free throw they got the rebound but couldn't convert but a beautiful pass there by Rashawn Martin making up for his turnover just a possession to go 57 to 44 the starters check back in with 242 left to go somehow Jay Jennings slips that pass in there to Sam Rigel for assist number trace for Jay Jennings. Rigel's up to a dozen. And under a minute to go, UT Martin just did not have what it took in the tank to get back into this ball game. Aaron Dooley and Josh Marshall, the top two players for Eastern Kentucky today, hook up there to extend the lead to 15 and eventually be 18 as the buzzer sounded. Every year it seems like we have somebody who gives us a lot of turbulence in conference play. Last year it was Samford, the year before Moorhead State. Now this season it seems like it's going to be Eastern Kentucky. We fought a 10-2 in conference play. Both losses have come at the hands of the Colonels as this one wasn't really that competitive near the end of the ball game as Diggs had 14 but shot 7 of 17. Chris Fay was really the only player who shot efficiently and had a good mark for points in the ball game. Meanwhile, the three-headed monster of Sam Rigel, Josh Marshall, and Aaron Dooley all recorded at least 10 points and all shot at least 50% with the exception of Dooley. All in all, just a very impressive performance by the Colonels. We'll head back to some simulating as we make it two straight against Samford. 76 to 73, this one was an overtime victory against the Bulldogs. Chris Fay, you see here, a basket away from his career high as he really led the way for us. We rode him to this overtime victory. 28, nine, a block, a steal, and an assist. What a performance by the senior Fay, one of the best in his career. 23 and eight for Seneca Lopez. What a battle those two big guys put on for us. And Chris Fay almost outdid himself in the next outing against Tennessee Tech. Right now, Tech's third in the conference, but we took care of them, 74 to 67, 23 and 10. And Dusty Harrison with a career high, 15 and a career high, five assists. Very impressive, but Jacques Diggs in these two games that we've simulated, he only had six combined points between Sanford and Tennessee Tech. So right now, Jacques Diggs, his points per game average continues to decrease a little bit game by game. He needs to try to break this cold spell. And we're going to need him as we face the Jacksonville State Gamecocks on the road here to finish out the episode. Right now, Jacksonville State is sixth in the conference for the first time ever in the series. They can make the playoffs here in the OVC if they play their cards right. Jaden King Jr. is a nightly trouble level threat, probably the most all-around player in the entire conference. The six foot five point guard marks well in every category. And we're gonna need Roshan Martin to step up this game because Pierre Hamilton, unfortunately, for the second time this season, will miss some time. Although he may seem some brief time as he's not injured, he's only day to day. However, he did sustain a knee injury in practice and Rashawn Martin will be trying to fill the shoes of Hamilton today and with the way he played the first time around filling him or filling the position, especially against that Sanford uh, game the first time we played them, I think Rashawn Martin should be in for a pretty fun night tonight. We'll see how he does against one of the better point guards in the conference of Jaden King Jr. Two to one ball game. Let's make that five to one with a quick three there by Jacques Diggs who already is <laughs> halfway to his total in the last two games he's participated in, he's only scoring six points between the previous two ball games as King will try to fire there and knock one down. A lot of height given up between King and Rashawn Martin as Jaden King is 6'4", Martin only 5'8". 7-4 now as one thing that's been a bit of the issue this episode has been the turnovers. We had way too many in the EIU game and that seems to be continuing against Jacksonville State as Tony Benzel. 44% from beyond the arc, he averages 7, he is 3rd on the team in points per game, knocks one down there. 11-8 ball game as Diggs will slice up this zone defense, he's got 9 already. Definitely the best start we've seen for Jacques Diggs in any game, possibly since the EIU game where he had 20. It's been a pretty rough patch for Jacques Diggs to say the least. The perimeter defense continues to be a bit of an eyesore as we see Kyle Chen, the sixth man for Jacksonville State, knocking down a shot there. The jump shooting continues to be great for the Gamecocks. Meanwhile, UTM continues to go inside Teron Gardner. A lot of guts there to take that full court. 
And one reason why we're doing so well inside is the fact that Jacksonville State's their seven foot freshman, Dean Willingham, he's out with two early fouls. So we've been tearing it up inside. There's a turnover there by Tony Benzel. We would convert a basket off of that mishap there. Benzel once again has the ball with 6.18 left to go and he turns it over once again. Schneiderman's back healthy, back to the action. And right now, Schneiderman is having a really good defensive episode, wouldn't you say? To Ron Gardner now trying to back his way down into the post. Going with the drop step movies, met with a double team. Kicking it out to Dusty Harrison. A pump fake off of one dribble. That one will be right through the rim. Tickling the twine is the freshman. Dusty Harrison continues to be impressive. And you'll see later on in this episode, maybe the lineup we should have with Pierre Hamilton's injury. Maybe we should have Dusty Harrison at the two and Diggs at the one. You guys will see in the second half that that might be the best way to handle things. As Pierre Hamilton continuing to struggle here with this injury he's dealing with. Not often we see a dumb turnover like that from Pierre Hamilton. He seems to be in some pain, so coming back in is Jacques Diggs as Hamilton slides, or Harrison rather, will slide to the two. 21 and 19, Jacksonville State back out on top as UTM goes through a bit of a rough patch here. Lawton, he will stroke that three pointer with Tony Benzel closing out on him. UT Martin back out in front as Lawton hits yet another tough three here in the episode. 22 21, Fry at the foul line extended, will back his way all the way down to the low block. This one's eventually reversed out to Diggs, who's up to a dozen points for the junior. I love the turnaround you're seeing for Jacques Diggs. He looks a lot more confident than he has in weeks. 28-25, now under two minutes to play. Diggs has a lot of space here to get a pass in to Blaine Fry. Instead, Fry will float it back out to Dusty Harrison. You guys saw early on in the game that we did a great job finding our looks deep inside of the post with no Dean Willingham on the floor for Jacksonville State. Now we're starting to work our way back out, and it's really providing good looks for us. Six seconds left to go. We're up by six, and looking to increase that lead with one second left to go is Rashawn Martin off his back foot. Knocks down the three. What a shot there by Martin to extend the lead up to nine. We've seen a lot of schools across the OVC really giving UTM a hard time as of recent, but that little spurt there gave them their biggest halftime lead in weeks, up to nine now. Finally, some semblance of consistency from three. Diggs made two three-pointers. Harrison had one in his seven-point effort. He's been terrific. And once again, the Skyhawks are shooting well from the line. They are knocking down 9 of 12 today from the charity stripe. 13 points for Diggs in his effort to break his cold streak. And Tony Benzel and Jaden King, they lead the game Cox with 6 points apiece. 36 to 27 as Rashawn Martin still trying to stay step for step with Jaden King. That one's off the mark. Teron Garner collects outlet pass. Rashawn Martin does a little twirl before he shoots this one and knocks down his second three-pointer in a row. Martin on paper is not the best three-point shooter. His rating is only a 66, but he looked confident when he jacks him up, and he can hit one every once in a while. 32% from three for the freshman. 47 to 40, Diggs, wow, what a pass. What a find by Diggs. Over to Harrison in the right corner. That one's fired up and hit by Harrison. He's up to 13, approaching his career high of 15. And speaking of 15, that's what the lead is right now. A huge spurt thanks to that deadly five lineup of Harrison and Diggs sharing the floor together. And Tony Benzel, he will be out of control in this possession. Turnover, Luke Lawton, he's about to dunk this one down to end the game. Psych, I got you. Just a little foul there, a hard one by Tony Benzel from behind. Nonetheless, Lawton will step up to the line, sink these two free throws, and we can kind of coast our way to the finish line now. And if you overheard the PA announcer, if you were listening closely, yes, UT Martin earns their way into the bonus from here on out with that foul by Benzel. Just another example, not only are they making their free throws, but they're getting to the line a lot as well this game. 72 to 53, we bring in the reserves to finish this game out. This was an emphatic performance. Diggs once again reached 20 for the second time this episode, a great turnaround effort. But a little caveat to the entire thing, a little hiccup in the road, my game decided to freeze. Oh, wow, that's pretty funny. These types of things just happen though, so 
what I decided to do was I just decided to load my game back up. Unfortunately, it didn't save, so I just kept repeating. I turned off autosave and I kept resetting the game until I got a stat line and a final score similar to what we had. So here we go, 79 to 52, pretty close to what we had, and Diggs had a good game in the simulating. And as you can see here, only five games left in the regular season, 13 and two overall as UT Martin continues their dominance here in conference play. This might be the year where we see UT Martin and Coach Carter finally take that leap, not only make March Madness, but turn some heads in it as well. We also, of course, have to get past Eastern Kentucky with their two wins against us. They have risen to the number two seed if the season ended today with Tennessee Tech right behind them. So this episode comes to an end. Jacques Diggs, 15 and a half points. Honestly, he's leaving a little bit less or a little bit more to be desired in these last few weeks, but that was a very inviting performance against the Gamecocks. Christopher Fay up to 14 and 8 or 6 rebounds rather, and that 14 points per game tally, that means he's third across the entire conference in points per game among big men, and Diggs is number three across the entire conference among guards in points per game. So pretty interesting stats there, pretty funny stats if you ask me. And that'll bring an end to this uh, most recent installment of UT Martin Skyhawk Hoops. I hope to see you next time. As the next time we check in with Coach Carter, we'll be wrapping up Season 5's regular season.